Welcome back, everybody. Welcome if you are new. Another episode of the career mode today. Uh, we're not doing great in the points, obviously. We're trying to do the best we can. We got that newer engine and uh, package and all that. And we're trying to build more engines and everything. But uh, we're very far back in the points. At least we're not dead last. But I think uh, the one that's in dead last hasn't ran every single race this year. So points up front are pretty tight between Kevin Harvick and Jeff Gordon. They've been swapping back and forth uh, a few times trying to uh, see who can hold the lead. And Stuart, Dale, Jarrett, and Junior have been trying to work their way back up and then falling in some races. But... It keeps going back and forth. So we are doing research and development on tire wear. Where is it? Research and development down there. Tire wear. Uh, we got seven more races for that. So it's going to take a while. But uh, trying to work towards next year for sure. Trying to research and develop things. But also trying to keep a good amount of money in the bank. So when that finishes, we can research and develop something else for next season as well. So uh, going on to Pocono, we'll see how we can do. Hopefully we can run all right to very fast track. But slowing down for these corners is going to probably be tough. I think we ran here once earlier in the season. I want to say and we didn't do great I want I don't think so uh, let's see if uh, we could do any better all right we're about like three and a half seconds off of uh, the pole time the pole time is like a 52.3 I've ran a 55.7 was the fastest I got down to so we'll see if we could have an okay time in our second lap because the first lap we don't have as much speed coming in so all on the second one we'll see what we could do but Ran faster than when we were here previously, which is a positive, and not by much, I don't think, but uh, we definitely did, because I got the uh, thing to uh, add your name to like the timing sheet thing, like it always does whenever you beat the personal best lap at every track. So, first run, I ran like a 55.9, didn't beat it, so I knew that we definitely ran here before, and then second time, or third time, I think, I went out because I made a few changes, we ran a 55.7, and then it it said I beat it, so we'll see what we can do. This actually was a pretty decent time on the first lap. I made a couple changes and then came down and, uh, and did qualifying, so I didn't go do any practice laps. I, I dropped the uh, air pressure a couple PSI. And that actually seems to have helped, and we might be able to have a faster second lap because we have more speed coming to the line, I believe. So we are already 35th in uh, qualifying. That's a really good start. I will take that. Hopefully we can try to keep this up for the race, which we probably won't because we can always qualify much better than our race pace. Just tire wear and stuff like that. They just grip and go a lot better in the race. I got lost it there on the exit of the tunnel turn. As long as we can nail three and four or just turn three here. I'm on the rumble strips and we should be able to have a pretty decent lap here. I think it might be a 54, honestly. If we can get into the 54s, that'd be awesome. 54.7. I will take that. Is that 30th? 24th. Wow. We qualified super well. Welcome to Pocono Raceway, located in the heart of the beautiful Pocono Mountains for today's Pennsylvania 500 on MRN. What can we look for on this unusual track, Barney? The corners here at Pocono can be absolutely brutal, and gear selection is crucial for those long straightaways. The drivers that'll do the best are the ones that can set their turns up correctly and slingshot out of them for that extra boost. The Sears Craftsman car hasn't made much of a move in the points so far. Well, there's always going to be someone who has to fill in the bottom of the points list. Of course, none of these guys want to ever see their name there. Sometimes it's just not your season to shine. Shauna Robinson has had some bad luck the last two races. I believe they got a good chance to turn their luck around right here. These guys have been working extra hard this week, and I think it just may pay off for them in the end. Bobby Hamilton is having some trouble in the points this year. And how frustrating that must be. You're working just as hard as everyone else, yet you just can't seem to finish well on race days to gain the valuable points you need. These guys need a good finish just to regain their confidence as a team. Let's see if we can take advantage of uh, a decent starting spot here because uh, we're qualifying 24th, which is shocking. And uh, we'll see what we can do. I'm going to try and get our way down. I'm going to try to move Scott Wimmer down the track maybe. No, we don't have very much acceleration, but I wanted to get down to the bottom. I did not want to be stuck up top for turn one. Because if we were up top for turn one, that would not be any good by any means. 
try and check up so we don't reckon anybody. We're three wide with Robinson and McMurray. We get two wide. I'll take that, get back up in line. And let's see if we can actually try to have a decent run here. Cause uh, if we can get single filed out, that'd be really nice. Gonna be nearly two wide into the tunnel turn. I'm gonna try and back off a little bit. Cause I really don't want to wreck this car early, but I want to try and just be as competitive as we can. We qualified in front of a bunch of faster people than us. So we'll see what we can do here. The tire wear is probably gonna kill us in this race, but that's why I really wanted to research it cause I feel like we're okay on some speed. I about put Matt Kenseth in the wall, sorry about that. I was getting tight on the exit. But uh, I really wanna get that tire wear better on the car cause then on the longer run, like before we go on pit, we won't just die off like every other race. So we definitely are okay in the beginning and I just overshot that corner pretty bad. So we're gonna lose a spot or two. Kurt Busch, Matt Kenseth trying to get by us. We're holding okay so far. We're not like just bleeding spots like massively like we do at a lot of races. I want to try and block Bobby Labonte down there. Oh, he shoots it to the outside there. I did not want to go into the tunnel turn on the outside, but he ended up flying by us anyway, so that's fine. That actually worked out pretty well for us. I love the paint scheme that's coming from behind us. The M&Ms like red, white, and blue look so good. I feel like I've never seen that car. Or I might have seen that car one time in uh, like on, a, in a race but it looks so damn good. I feel like it's such a rare paint scheme and it's so good. It's so underrated. Cause the normal uh, M&M's paint scheme is still pretty good. I always like that one as well. But yeah, bleeding off these spl uh, splots, spots uh, very quickly now. The longer we get into this race, the slower we're gonna get it seems like. Sean and Robinson was super slow through turn one there. We could follow Robbie Gordon around her, that'd be great. But we don't have the speed down the straightaway. Try and back off so we don't run into them. Oh, Bobby Hamilton about lost there behind us. It looked like he might have gotten the uh, curbing down there. The rumble strips pretty bad. Trying to get down there and get it straightened out before we uh, get on throttle so I don't overshoot the corner or anything. Casey Kane coming up on us. Try and block him down the track. Don't know if he's gonna get back to the inside of us by the time turn one comes, he might honestly. He doesn't, so we're fine. Oh, he gets inside of us in the middle of the corner. I got on throttle and, get, and went up the track really fast. Yeah, we're falling back pretty quick now. But we're in 39th, we're not dead last, still running all right. Uh, we're gonna have to pit near halfway or just after halfway, something like that. So, oh, we'll get this thing turned. Hopefully we don't damage this car too much and we can have a decent pit stop. I feel like, I feel like we can finish in the top 40 in this race, especially if somebody blows their motor like normal besides the last race I think we did. I think nobody blew their engine in one uh, race. I think it was New Hampshire or something like that, one we were actually doing well in. And then I screwed it up with a caution. Uh, other than that race, we've been doing really, really well. So I'm hoping that we can continue doing well because uh, we've been doing well the last couple weeks. Uh, I think, what was it? The one before New Hampshire, was it Dover? We struggled at, I feel like. That may have been it. But uh, since Daytona, we've done a lot better consistently. So I'm trying to see if we can get back by Casey Kane here, but we're like the same exact speed as him. I feel like we're slightly quicker in the, uh, in the corner. Getting that draft is helping a ton on the straights. Maybe we can put him in a bad spot going up top. Not quite. He doesn't really get slowed up by that much, but we get a good run on the exit. Trying to see if we could set him up for a pass somewhere. Turn three, trying to not come up onto him. We're still side by side. I want to get in his draft. All right, we're in this draft. Not really going to be able to get by him right here. But Shauna Robinson is a little slower than us, it looks like. So we might be able to make a pass on her if we can get by Casey Kane. Just Casey is really tough to get by right now. I feel like we're a little quicker. And it is catching them up behind us a little bit. I just whacked the mic with my hand trying to itch my eyebrow. 
Back it off early so we can get a good run on exit. Like, I'm getting pretty good runs, especially off that tunnel turn right there. I'm getting a massive run. If we set it up and run it correctly. I didn't go low enough. Sorry, Kane. We're fine. We're fine. We got a little bit of the draft. If we could stay in the draft on the straight, that'd be great. We don't got much long in the left front. Tires are definitely getting worn out. Gonna try and get by them here in turn one, potentially. Because we're, we're catching Shauna every single lap. Slow and steady we are, but we definitely are. And I'm, con I'm completely killing turn one really bad right there. That keeps checking me up a ton when we get slowed up on the exit, cr cutting back across the bumper of Kane. Trying to see if we can do anything. We seem a little quicker down the straights than him, which is a big positive. I missed the tunnel turn big time. Dang it. All right, just keep it off the wall. We're good. We got Bobby Hamilton behind us, who's been struggling this race very poorly. So don't know what his issue is. Should be able to catch back up to Casey Kane and Shauna Robinson. Had a good turn three there. Oh, don't smack the wall. Oh, that didn't hurt too bad. I was pushing it way too hard. Oh, Scott. Uh, what is it? Is it Scott Hall? I can't remember. Shane Hall? I think it's Shane Hall. Scott Hall is a damn uh, wrestler from like the 90s and stuff. Oh, shit. We're three wide. Casey Kane making the pass on Shauna Robinson. I feel like we're slightly quicker than Casey Kane, so we need to try and get back by Hamilton here so we can get single filed out and catch Shauna Robinson. If I wouldn't have, uh, like, nearly killed the wall in the tunnel turn last lap. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. This is not good. Okay, we save it. We're good. We definitely got some damage, but we're fine. This tire wear is killing my car now. I could tell. I want to make a slight adjustment to the tire wear because I feel like that's what's killing us right now. Or the um, tire pressure, because that might be killing us on tire wear for this race right now. I'm going to try and push him down and get inside of Hamilton. Super aggressive, but hey, it might work. Not quite, because I can't get the car slowed down enough for the damn corner anymore. Having a good run on exit, got checked up a little bit, but we're gonna be, Nose is gonna be in front of Hamilton here going into the tunnel turn. If I can get this thing slowed down for the tunnel, we'll be fine. I kinda wanna pit this like in half because the uh, tire wear is so bad. Yeah, we cannot get it turned through here anymore. Sorry, Hall. Yeah, I, I should have been hooked into the wall there. That was sketchy. That was very sketchy. Try to get back by Hamilton on this front stretch if we can. Car is getting super tight. That's gonna be the wall again. Damn it. Okay, yeah, that's really hurting us with doing that. I need to get. I need to make the car slightly looser with the uh, the wedge, and maybe change the tire pressure a little bit to try and make the tire wear not as bad. I'll probably go up one on the tire pressure, and we're gonna pit this lap. And then, which way do I need to go with the wedge? Damn it, um, I think it's negative. Negative is loose. So I gotta remember that. So we gotta go down a little on the wedge. I think I already had it at like negative one or something like that. Well, I think we fall into last of the cars running that have not pitted. There's definitely uh, some cars I've already pitted. You can see pit road is uh, kind of busy. But it is what it is. I wanted to cut this race in half to try and make our car better for the back half of the race. We'll be fine on fuel the rest of the race. Oh, he's spinning out. Hit that. We're good. I don't really need to repair damage. It's not that much anyways. We're at negative 1.5. Let's go to negative 2. Go up on the tire pressure. And hopefully we can have a good pit stop here. It's been a pretty uh, solid race for us so far, fighting with everybody. So hopefully we can continue and uh, have a good stop here.
feel like that did that did slow him down a decent bit like three seconds unfortunately it didn't really affect the gassing of the car it affected the left rear really bad so that's a little unfortunate we are in dead last now so we're gonna see if we could try and uh catch up to some guys but i think these guys are still out there not pitted jeff green and the 36 i don't know is that ken schrader maybe i can't 100 percent remember and that i think that was the m&m scheme i really liked so hopefully we can get this car rolling and see what we can do for the rest of this race i'm a little loose right now but i i, I wanted to do that so i could tighten it up for the longer run because that's what we've been really struggling on with later in the race so Definitely gonna struggle a little bit here uh, in the beginning being loose and that's all right. Uh, hopefully we can try and catch up to some guys and actually fight them for a position. Cause I felt like we were having a decent run and we're not super slow, but we just have to uh, try and catch back up to them. I think the problem is we might be too far back at this point to do anything to get any spots besides somebody blowing an engine. Oh, we just passed Shauna Robinson in pit road. She was just coming off pit road I saw, so. We definitely got one spot like legit on track right now because Robinson was really slow anyways and uh, she stayed out a couple more laps uh, on the old tires so that definitely helped us out a lot so that's one spot at least now hopefully somebody can blow a motor and we can get a second one. I can't believe it we have Robinson right behind us like she caught up so quick after coming all out of pit lane and I guess having a couple lap fresher tires because uh, the first run of the race she was super slow like you can see right there I, we just flew by her back in the uh, turn one but she's just so fast down these straightaways all of a sudden i guess they made some sort of change through her car uh once she pitted but she she waited way too long to pit to uh do all that i'm gonna try and block the absolute hell out of her though and hold this spot for dear life because i do not want to finish last on speed like every other week i want to actually stay in front of one person at least just beat out one person in a race legit and i'll be happy which we did at new hampshire i'm pretty sure we beat out a couple people but i completely screwed it and pushed way too hard in turn three there and then we got the faster people trying to catch up to us and pass us anyway so yeah we're last on speed i think there's one person on pit row with a blown motor um i'm guessing it's mark martin because it showed him like the number six uh like two positions in front of us when we hit the line I think his uh, pit stall was just past uh, the line. I about said line of scrimmage. The start finish line. But uh, so that's 42nd at least. We're not going to finish dead last. But man, I was hoping to actually beat out somebody on the track at this one. Uh, so that's a little rough. Probably going to finish 42nd here. But it is what it is. Just doing our best, grinding it out, trying to not wreck the car every week and uh, see if we can just gain some money slowly. And we're coming around to the white flag now because we're only one lap down in this race. But. What a rough race like normal. Uh, I'm, I really don't know if when you pit, when you already have that wedge changed from the setup, like I was already at negative 1.5. Does it add another negative 1.5 plus what everything else I added onto it? So I think I went down two clicks to like negative 2.5. Did it add the negative 2.5 onto the negative 1.5 or did it just add the negative 0.10 I, I added to it to go to 2.5? I don't know. So I, because I'm definitely a lot looser than I was before, but I don't know if like a full round was going to make me this loose the entire time. Besides this last lap, I actually got tight right there. But, uh, or if like, should I have only gone to negative 1.0 in the pit stop and then they still would have done the negative 1.0 added on to the negative 1.5. If you, does that make sense? That's all. I don't know. I don't know if that makes sense to anybody else, but in my mind that makes sense. But uh 42nd here in this race another rough one but uh still gonna gain some money out of it because we qualified really well yeah we get like seventy-eight thousand dollars a race per sponsor income which is so nice but Jarrett gets to win junior gets second stewart gets third and then gordon harvick it's funny because that's almost like the reverse of the top five in the points if junior would have won and dale Jarrett would have finished second that was literally the inverse of the top five in points so very interesting the top five are a top five here but it's just in a different order so they are flying the season all right we got indianapolis coming up the brickyard 400 uh i think our car should be fine yeah because it was a it was a hundred hundred car and it went down to 95 95 uh we have what an engine being built and repaired right now same with a chassis being repaired for three more races 
what kind of cars do we have overall? We only have one other one right now, which is an 88. And then what's our inventory looking like for like cars? And I'm trying to figure this all out at the moment. Uh, we will be fine. We have what? Inventory. There we go. I was just trying to figure out. So we have a 95, 79, 88. And the 88 is what's in the car already. And then we have the chassis should be similar. We're only three of them. Yeah. So we have that being repaired. And then we have this and that other one in the car. So yeah, we'll go with this 95, 95 for this race. We'll be fine. Hopefully we can qualify really well because we've been qualifying amazing lately. Like that Pocono race was phenomenal on the qualifying. So we just need to be able to keep up that speed for longer because we slowly bled it down to last pretty much by the time we pitted. So a little bit of a struggle, but $275,000 in the bank. We're slowly racking up the money and then we can start getting some of these repairs and uh, builds and uh, researches in quicker time over, over the season and everything. So everything is slowly starting to work out a lot better for us, even though the result aren't really there at the moment all right i got down to like four seconds off the uh qualifying time from jeff gordon he got a 50.6 i was able to run a 54.4 so just under four seconds off but uh we were kind of like that at pocono i feel like it was such a big track like we were similar around like three four seconds off i believe so hopefully uh with that being the case like pocono we could qualify pretty decent not a very good first couple corners though, even though it's not gonna matter too much because we'll have more speed on the second lap like normal. I'm just hoping uh, after, I feel like this is gonna be like a 20 lap race like Pocono. After about like like eight to nine laps, maybe our cars are gonna probably start getting tight. I would imagine, I don't 100% know, but that's what I would uh, assume. But who knows, we'll see how it goes. Try and get a good run here off a of turn four. For this front stretch, yeah, it's a real good run. No, it's not. I got a little sideways. Definitely lost a little bit of speed there, but it's all right. Oh boy, what are we gonna get? 55, and that's 43rd on the first lap. So us getting 43rd on the first lap's not a good sign, to say the least, because usually we don't start out in 43rd off the first lap. So hopefully we can pick up like a second here. Oh, I missed turn two. Hopefully we can pick up about a second close to at least to try and make up for that because my first two turns were not good on that first lap so turn two in that lap was not any good so we're sitting here trying to rebound if we can need to have a killer three and four turn three was not great but i could work with it turn four i feel like we nailed that Touch the grass a little bit might have not been great, but great exit off of turn four. That's the exit I was trying to get that first time, and I got a little too sideways once we got to the straightaway. So I think it's going to be a 54, 54.3. That was slightly quicker than practice. And 39th. Okay, so we got top 40 at least, got the sponsor money. That's all that mattered. Welcome to MRN's live coverage from the famed Indianapolis Motor Speedway for today's Brickyard 400. The Brickyard is a track with a lot of history, and it's seen plenty of great racing over the years, hasn't it, Barney? Well, every little boy has a dream of one day racing here at Indy, and what an exciting experience for the rookies who are getting to do it for the first time. Steve Park will start this race a little farther back than he's used to. Yeah, he's definitely not used to having to pick through traffic so early in a race. This could make it an exciting race for him, or it could be disastrous. You just never know when you start in the back. Jeff Purvis must have had problems in qualifying this week. Yeah, he was due for one of these bad starts, though. Nobody can start up front all year. You're going to have a bad qualifying run now and then. The Sears Craftsman car really needs a good finish in this race. He's got a long way to go on the points list. Yeah, those guys have been working so hard this year. It's a shame it doesn't really show in points. Just seems they can't keep that car out of trouble on race day. Maybe their luck will change today. I don't think it's necessarily that we get in trouble we're just slow i also saw the the winner's purse of this race was like four hundred and twenty eight thousand dollars which is like over double what uh has been for like a lot of these races this year so that is exciting so we should get a decent amount of money in this race kind of regardless because uh we just made it here basically it's like the daytona 500 it's gonna pay out pretty well i know we're gonna be slow it's only a 16 lap race so we'll pit around like lap eight ish 
try and make the car better in uh, the pit stop, but uh, we already qualified pretty far back. Luckily, we didn't have to bleed off too many spots, and we're already back here now. So we'll sit here, try to do the best that we can. I might be able to beat them into some corners because they're all going to be checking up really hard. Potentially, maybe not. I thought it would be kind of like Pocono in a way. I really thought we were going to qualify a lot better because uh, I thought it was going to be like Pocono in that sense. But because uh, these corners are very much like uh, the tunnel turn in a way at Pocono. So hopefully, because I think actually I think Pocono's tunnel turn is based off of Indianapolis like corners like each each one of the three turns at Pocono is based off another track, which is a very interesting fact. And I'm pretty sure the tunnel turn is based off of Indianapolis here, which makes a lot of sense because they, they feel very similar, and especially going into turn one and stuff, having so much speed and having to check up for the turns. But we're not too far back from the, the pack. I don't imagine we're going to end up catching them or anything. I'm just hoping one guy will blow his motor so we don't finish dead last so we can get a little bit more money. But uh, hopefully we could do the best we can here and maybe maybe some people will get in a wreck, damage their cars and stuff. And we're just going to try to keep our car clean in this one. Handful of cars already coming down pit road, lap five going into lap six so they can make it the rest of the way on uh, fuel. They'll have no problem. I really hate the entry of turn one in the shade. It is awful trying to go through that shade. Like I feel like I lose my line of sight so badly into turn one and I've also smacked the wall a couple times you can see the right side and the right rear is damaged because uh, either I've pushed it too hard coming off a corner or in the middle of three and four and then one time off of uh, turn four I got all loose and stuff like we did in uh, qualifying and smacked the wall but we're halfway in fuel I'm gonna pit here in a couple laps anyways so the fuel is not really an issue but I'm gonna try and change tire pressure down one I guess and I don't really know if we need to do anything else to the car just cuz but we're just way off pace anyway So it doesn't matter too much. I just want the car to feel a little bit more stable So uh, it doesn't like sm like smack all around and stuff like it did when I hit the wall So hopefully somebody blows a motor or is just stuck on pit road. That'd be great And uh, we can actually gain a spot in this race and finish 42nd at least We're gonna come down and pit this time going into lap 8 instead of lap 8 going into lap 9 just cause, uh, try and do it while the pit road's less busy. Cause there's like nobody in pit road right now. So I need to get it down to 70. The thing is, I don't know exactly where the line's at is the problem. And we hit the speed limit. Oh, are you kidding me? We really hit a speeding penalty there. That is so stupid. I might've been over by one mile an hour. That is ridiculous to say the least. So that's just going to slow our pit stop down even more for no reason. So that's quite unfortunate. At least they had a clean pit stop. It would have been like a 17 something second lap, like a pit stop. So would have been nice. 22.3 would have been a 17.3. So that would have been really solid. We actually only have one guy coming. I want to try and get onto the racing surface because it's way too loose down there. Even though that's the dumbest way to uh, come up on the track, especially through the grass and everything. But trying to stay on that exit lane on this game is ridiculously like on ice. So it is just really, really bad for me. So I decided to try to come up early. Luckily, we only had Greg Biffle coming and uh, was able to move him out of the way pretty much by just getting in the way on the bottom. So that will help us uh, get out of pit road a little quicker at least. And we'll see if we cycle around anywhere, if anybody blows a motor, because we're currently in dead last. I think we're a lap down because uh, the leaders have not pitted yet. So it will be interesting to see if we can make up any time to like these guys that have not pitted like Biffle and some others. So it will be uh, it's cool to see if we can pass anybody at all. And hopefully somebody blows a damn motor. That's all I can hope for at this point. Well, we're going to get off of the like lap down list for a second, but I think immediately Jeff Gordon has the lead behind us. Uh, so that's a little unfortunate. We're going to go back a lap down very quickly here. He's going to get under us here going in this corner. Just back off. Try to let him by so we can have somewhat of a straightaway. But we got Dale Jarrett and everybody flying up on us as well. Kind of can use a little bit of their draft. I don't know why. Yeah, I was like, well, I don't know why he's not trying to poke down and uh, get by us on the straightaway here. It's a lot better than uh, trying to get by me in the corners like Kenseth has to here. 
Kenza is running in third. He's doing a damn good job of it this week. Last week, uh, he qualified behind us, so he's having a big turnaround in the race. But we're 43rd. Nobody's on pit road, it looks like now. I think everybody's finished their uh, pit stops, so I think we're the only one to lap down currently, and the people coming off pit road are leaving turn two right now. So we are, like, a full two turns behind them at the moment. Oh, somebody is slow off a of turn two, I see. The leader is catching them quick. I think somebody blew their motor. I was about to say at the end of this that everybody brought their good stuff, not wanting to blow a motor for the really high uh, winner's purse. But I think it just happened with uh, coming up to like two laps ago now. We're on two laps ago. Because the uh, we're a lap down. Yeah, somebody blew their motor. They're on the bottom down there. I don't know who it is, but it was somebody running towards the back, I want to say. So that could help us out in the points compared to them, which would be nice. I don't know why Sterling wanted to go inside so late. Uh, that is Kyle Petty. So yeah, he was back there in the points by us in the, for the most part. So that's not bad. I'm really happy about that. We're coming up to the white flag now as well. And uh, we're not going to finish dead last. So we got lucky there, at least gain a little bit of money, finishing one spot higher. Probably not anything significant, but hey, it, every penny is worth, uh, every penny is worth it that we can use. So. Hopefully that will be good for us. On the last lap now though, try to not get rear-ended here. Just try to get down to the bottom if we can. Stay out of their way and we should be good for the rest of this thing. Coming around to the checkered flag. I know Gordon was in the lead when uh, we got lapped and then, oh, we're gonna smack the wall. Dang it. Really had to hit the wall in the last corner of this race. I'm an idiot. But uh, I know Gordon was in the lead, and then it was... Who was up there? I don't even remember who all was up there. It was a tough race. I was just too busy trying not to smack the wall. Dale Jarrett ends up winning by over a second. Wow. That's kind of crazy. I, mean, I do remember Kenseth up there, but man, they, they really uh, got the lead. We ended up getting 80000 for the race winning, so we get a really big uh, amount of money for us, at least 160000 about for this race. I will take that. We were the only one to lap down, like, uh, legitimately, and then Kyle Petty blew his motor. Helped us get a spot, at least, so thank you, Kyle. We've now got $375,000 in the bank. Next episode, we're going to be going to Watkins Glen. So that will be the second road course we're going to. We still got five races left until the tire wear is finished. Engines, we got two races left on a repair, four races left on a new build, and two races left on a repair for a chassis. So that is good. And then uh, we'll have a decent amount of money by the time those things get done. We might be able to repair something else pretty quickly as well. Uh, I want to see these standings here. We are getting caught by Shane Hall now. He has two points behind us. That is a fat yikes. We're doing so terrible in the points. Kyle Petty was not that low in points, actually. He was th he's 30 seconds, but uh, he I knew he was somewhat back there with us. But the points at the front, Gordon does get back the lead over Kevin Harvick in this episode. Stewart uh, closed the gap a little bit. Dale Jarrett closed the gap by about 50 or 40-ish, something like that. Dale Jr. stayed right around the, uh, the same amount. So not too bad. Points are pretty tight up front. Interesting uh, end of the year heading towards us. We got 14 races left in the season. So having a, uh, a fun race uh season so far in our rookie career and uh slowly getting the car better and better we just really need to get that race pace down that's what we're really lacking right now so hopefully we have a good amount of money next time we go to research something we can do it faster and then build something new fast again so hopefully we can uh start getting our car progressively better faster at the end of this year going into next year that would be awesome so hopefully you guys enjoyed the episode appreciate you guys for watching as always and i'll catch you guys in the next one